One, two, Ready? three. Vodka sucks. Vodka sucks. Vodka sucks. Vodka sucks. <laughs> okay, we're gonna drink some. I think vodka. The, I think it works. This, uh, did you know we're drinking vodka? On this I'm episode? so Ooh, disappointed. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to Old Fashioned Finance, the podcast that mixes cocktails and high finance. I'm your host, Caleb Franker, and I'm joined by my good friend and fellow money muddler, Jason Burnell. Can a podcast about finance be entertaining? Not without alcohol. And not with vodka. Not with vodka. Let's mix it up. Woo! Oh, wow. Boy. We are just building this one up, aren't we? Yeah, we are. <laughs> you ever try to build something up you're really not looking forward to? It feels like a Monday. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're drinking vodka today. Yeah! You know what? Cheetos. At least it's corn vodka yeah, that's and right. not tater water. America, America. <laughs> Tito's is actually the most popular liquor in the state of Ohio sales-wise. No you know way. That? No, I didn't. Yeah. Wow. I Trivial think, pursuit. I think Texas for and you. Ohio. I think Texas and Ohio is well, the most popular. Makes sense. There's lots of drunks in Ohio. <laughs> you know who would not drink Tito's? People from Kentucky. <laughs> Good point. My people. My people. <laughs> Even though I can't claim them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we are drinking gimlets today, Ooh. Jason. Ooh. Uh, have you ever had a gimlet? I've never had a gimlet for yeah. a good reason. <laughs> you ever heard of a gimlet? <laughs> I, I have. I guess I didn't really know what was in it. I didn't realize it was so simple. Yeah, it's very simple, actually. So simple that you, too, can make one at home. That's right. <laughs> Just um, follow these eight easy instructions. There's not even. There's three. There's okay, three steps. That's not bad. We'll get into that in a second here, but I have to make a confession. You can make these with gin, too. Oh, it makes sense. It's clear. In, it, in most cases, you can substitute vodka for gin. I would like I to mean, say vice in, versa, but that's all, not true. In all cases. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't like vodka, uh, but here's the deal. We're going to Mar- give it a shot. Yeah. We're when drinking. we did martinis, remember we talked about differentiating vodka martinis and a martini. Right. That's the way I, but but people a lot of times say a gin martini. Well, no, a gin martini is just a martini. It's a martini. A vodka martini is actually a waste of liquor. <laughs> but a gimlet, <laughs> as far as I can tell, started with vodka. So we're gonna do it some service and drink it like it yeah. was like it was planned. I how it was I, made. I think there's I a know. simplicity to this for a reason. I, I mean, I guess I'm I'm kind of being mean, but. I, you we'll know, see. We'll we see. haven't tried this yet. We I've never had one before. I can look at the ingredients and pretty much figure out what it's going to taste like. This might just be in that alcohol delivery system uh, <laughs> kind of category. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully I'm surprised. It is real cold. So that yeah, helps. There's one positive note. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what we're working with today, Jason, is two and a half ounces of vodka, a half ounce of lime juice, freshly squeezed. Nice. A half ounce of simple syrup. Garnish with a lime wheel. So basically, we're going to put the vodka, the lime juice, the simple syrup into a shaker with ice and shake that baby up. Get it cold. Shake it a lot. Get it real cold until there's frost on the outside of the shaker. Yep. And then strain into a chilled cocktail glass. Or I guess you can do a rocks glass, but they do look cooler in a cocktail glass Mm -hmm. with a lime wheel on the side. Jason. Let's plug our nose and try it. (laughs) (laughs) Cheers. I'm I'm hoping we're going to be surprised here. So, Uh, hmm. crickets (laughs) crickets <laughs> uh, i wanted to like it i i, I don't um, well i like the lime you know what that lime i, I can tell that I, I cut it yesterday and it's been sitting in the fridge <laughs> it's not super fresh <laughs> yeah but you mix know. that with vodka <laughs> <laughs> no i i think the hmm. I, I, I think one of my biggest reasons i don't like vodka so much is just because it's like you're trying to pretend like you are drinking without drinking like yeah you don't, there's like almost no taste to this i don't know i get a rubbing alcohol taste when i i drink ooh, vodka ooh. Um, i didn't get that i got i got a flat seven up or sprite is what i'm getting yeah i do get that i think that's the simple syrup in there it, jason it, i don't know how you feel about this i'm gonna say let's pause and go make this with gin okay pause pause <laughs> All right. And we're back. We're back. Uh, Jason, I couldn't do it. I know. <laughs> I, we, we just said, like, for the first time ever, the podcast felt like work. Yeah. Like, like no, I'm not having a great time drinking that. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I guess I drink cocktails to enjoy them, and that just was not. I gave it, I gave it a really good try. I, I tried it at least three or four times, and, yeah, it, it went from flat seven up to... Uh, <laughs> 
to and nail polish remover. Yeah, to uh, just like I don't like vodka. Yeah, I think my mouth just was sanitized. That's pretty much what it comes down to. You know, we've had vodka in Bloody Marys. Yep, we've had vodka in. Harvey Wallbanger. Yeah, that's right. A great episode. Yeah, that's and that's a decent drink. We went through a stretch where we used vodka quite a bit. And um, I don't know. They were never horrible. That's not good. That was not good. You know how I know I'm not an alcoholic? <laughs> I threw that away. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't even look back. <laughs> no, no. I just can't do it. So now we're, we got round two here. Yeah, we're same ingredients. We put gin in. So this is technically a gin gimlet, that's, I guess. Yeah. Well, a ginlet? I don't know. Cheers. I mean, Let's try it out. The, yeah. Can't be any worse than the last one. Well, we like gin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh, that's summery. Wow. Ooh, I like that. It's piney. <laughs> it's very I piney. Taste the gin. <laughs> hey, you know what? Maybe I'm thinking uh, this is just maybe in my imagination, but doesn't it even look prettier? It, <laughs> it does. It's, but it's just not, it, it's got a little haze to it. That's the only. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, vodka is just an alcohol delivery system. Yeah, yeah, that's no. it. Yeah, I did you, not. You have should fun. go buy those like Kool Aid boxes they have there that are eleven yeah. percent alcohol. What grape juice? Grape juice. Uh-huh. Yeah, if you really want to just not taste alcohol. Wow. Okay, so but um, gin is great. Gin's great, and I still got to say I'm not a huge fan of this drink. It's just okay, but it is worlds better with gin uh, over vodka. I. Didn't enjoy any of the vodka. Actually. <laughs> that, All right. That was not good. Okay, so I can drink this. Uh, it kind of feels summery. So <laughs> let's let's talk about something else. We could give a podcast like. now. <laughs> I don't like vodka. Let's talk about something else we don't like. Credit scores. Just Ooh, kidding. Oh, gosh. Yeah. No, this is pretty under- interesting. Yeah, let's talk about credit scores. This has been coming up more. You know, it it has. And we've talked for a long time about doing an episode about credit scores. This is going to be kind of a fact versus fiction type of a thing. Okay. okay? I'm so good there are that. a lot of misconceptions out there around credit scores, the scoring system, things that you should, shouldn't do. There's a lot of opinions out there. If you're graduating high school or college and you're you're getting out on your own, and you're, you know, you, you should get a first... payday loan, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Misconception number one. <laughs> um, but, you know, you may be thinking about establishing credit and somebody's probably told you, hey, you, you should establish credit. You're going to need it. And, right. you know, your credit is something that's very, very valuable. You should protect that with everything you've got. There are some good ways about to go about building your credit. There's some bad ways. There are some folks out there who says just don't worry about it. Forget about credit. You know, you know, you're doing well if you don't have a credit score. So there's some some truth to all of these facets, I think. Let's jump in. And we're going to talk about uh, a little bit of fact versus fiction. The, the first thing I want to just highlight and talk about a little bit is your credit score. Sure. What is it? FICO. You've heard of your FICO score. Yeah. That's uh, off the top of my head. Fair Isaacs Corporation. Is that what that stands for? I think for? that's what it is. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I mean, like another acronym in our business. Yeah. Like nobody knows. Fair and Isaac. He's a great guy. Great guy. Is the same guy? I think, it, I think it was two gentlemen, maybe. <laughs> it is. Who developed a system, and it's kind of stuck. That's the one. Uh, your FICO score is comprised of scores from three different credit bureaus. And scores, I mean, you're talking, this is a, this is a complicated algorithm. Absolutely. Yeah. We're the- going to talk a lot about what goes into your credit score. Sure. And things that a lot of people think maybe go into your credit score that actually don't have any bearing. So Exactly. The, the three credit bureaus are... Are Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. Yep. Average score or uh, their, their scoring systems. Uh, the, each of them are a little bit different. Just a little different. I, I think we go from like 300 to 850 at mm-hmm. the top end. So if you have a credit score, you're somewhere between 300 and 850. So if you've got a 300, don't think, well, it's better than zero. It's actually not. <laughs> <laughs> Probably means you had a bankruptcy at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Just some fun facts, though. What do you think the average credit score in the United States is? And and I'm going to give you a hint. It has come up over the last few years. Hmm. I would say 625. I would have thought that, too. I, I really would have thought that, too. Uh-oh. It's 714, believe it or really? not. Really? Yeah. Good wow. credit is the average. Well, that um, makes sense. We love him. We love ourselves some debt. That's we, for sure. We do. So I yeah. think uh, as of a few years ago, uh, before 2020 and everything that's happened since sure. then, I think the average score was somewhere closer to 695, 700. Wow. Which is just still considered me. okay credit, by yeah. the way. But think about it. All that money that was printed, stimulus checks and all that. There are a lot of very responsible people who took those as opportunities to pay off some credit That's cards. That's true. Yep. And revolving debt. We'll get into what that does to your score. Jason, what's the gold standard in credit? What do, you, what do you think the best score? Like if you have above this score, you're gold, man. Oh, gosh. I would think at least 750. Okay. 
I, so 750 is going to probably get you where you need to go. I think a lot of people focus, and I, I know I've heard this from folks who are very proud of their 800 credit score. Yeah, right? that's really high. It, yeah. 20% of Americans with a credit score are above 800, believe that or not. Yeah, see, I, I don't feel good about that. No. So. <laughs> one, one in five walking around are above 800. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. So we're doing better credit score wise. All right. Now, maybe that's a different indication on yeah. how we're doing Gosh. with debt in general. You know what popped in my head when you said that? Like one in five have an 800 credit score. I'm like, one in five people walking around have hepatitis. Like, Ooh, I was thinking <laughs> aneurysm because I thought I heard that somewhere. But I'm like, uh, Ugh, like hey. it doesn't make me feel that great. So hopefully it's maybe not I'm having one. a visceral reaction like the drink. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ooh. kind of weird. I don't know. One in five people like vodka, Jason. Oh, that's no. disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Going back to the drink, your mileage may vary. Do what you enjoy. If you like vodka, have fun. That's I'm right. sure that this is a good drink for vodka. Yeah, I mean... It, just, like, it didn't cover it up enough for me. Yeah. And I usually like the uh, the liquor to shine. Send us an anyway. email of a vodka drink that you think we might like. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll just tear we'll it try apart. It. We'll try it on the show. <laughs> back to credit scores, though. Uh, yeah, so scores are higher than I thought they were. They're better than I thought they would be. But let's talk about what your credit score actually is, Jason. And, okay. And Dave Ramsey, And this right? is why I'm yeah. having the visceral reaction. Yeah. What, what does Dave say about your credit score? You, you don't worship at the altar of the great FICO. I mean, yeah. that's like his line. And I've also heard him say, hey, look, this score is not something to fret over. It Really, all it is is it's a, it's a scoring system for how willing you are to get in bed with banks. It's an I love debt score. It, it is. And it, 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 that is what it is. I mean, I'm not we, saying that you shouldn't focus on having a good credit score. A, well, a good credit score is a good thing to have. Right. But you're right. Some people look at this as we just wrapped up a series a couple of episodes back on financial freedom. A lot of people look at their credit score as an indication of their financial freedom. I can borrow whatever I want. I can go, I'm See, and I would set. I would be the opposite. I'd be like, "You know what? I'm going to be proud when that when that credit score just disappears." One day when someone says, "I'm sorry, sir, you don't have a credit score." You yes, can, I've arrived. You cannot get a cell phone, you know. <laughs> I mean, cuz credit is tied to so many things. Well, I mean, I, I some, I think some employers look at credit score, Jason. They do. And I mean, this one, for example, but um, we have to pull credit. It doesn't mean I'm looking at the score, but the, the reality is, is I think the reason I'm reacting the way I am is just, I don't view it as a financial badge you should be wearing. But at the same time, you know, the Dave Ramsey, who cares what the score is, mm -hmm. finance your house with zero credit, like all of that. Now, I think we are going to take we're going to take a middle road here. Yeah, we that usually makes a do. lot lot more sense here. Dave says a lot of really great things that help a ton of people. And sure does. I have a similar reaction when it comes to credit. I don't like debt. I don't like to borrow. So I don't. That score means nothing to me most of the time. But you know, it, it is good. I think if you're young and starting out to establish credit, build credit, maintain good credit. Mm -hmm. But again, don't worship at the altar of FICO, as you said. That's a great line. Exactly. Yeah. That that is not financial freedom, right? I think you have achieved financial freedom when that score drops off and you don't have it anymore. Let's talk about what goes into that that score, Jason. And I thought this was really interesting because there are a lot of misnomers out there. But basically, it's broken down into five different areas. So 35 percent. Okay. The, the biggest ingredient to your credit score is your payment history. No surprise there, right? Don't be late. Don't be late. Not even a day. Well, it, <laughs> now, being a, a day late is a bad thing because uh, most of these companies will charge you a fee. Now, they won't report to the credit bureaus, but they'll, they'll charge you a late if, fee. So if, they love when you're a day to 30 days late. If you just have it in your mind. Yeah. Who cares what the algorithm says? <laughs> Don't be late. Yeah. No, you shouldn't be late. Again, it might not affect your credit score if you're less than 30 days late, but it's going to affect your bank account. Sure. Late fees are not cheap. 30%, Jason, is your amount owed on credit lines. So okay. how much debt you have. How much debt you have. Yep. 15% is length of credit history. So how long are those trade lines established? 10% is your credit mix. So this is interesting. The types of debt Ooh, that you own. Yeah. Nice. So I like, like to diversify my debt. Yeah. Like the, the, <laughs> the vodka in your Gimlet cocktail, right? Would be uh, like credit cards. Yeah. <laughs> We got rid of it and <laughs> diversified with Jen. <laughs> well, when we when we talk about yes, we replaced bad debt with uh, I don't even I'm not going to say good debt. Yeah, Forget exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we might fight across the table here. <laughs> well, so the credit mix could you know that's a, a difference in revolving loans, credit cards, or installment loans, right? Things like that. Obviously, I, I think that uh, if you have a lot of credit cards, that's probably not great debt. If there is such a thing, there which there's not, mm -hmm. and, and ten percent is related to new credit. So how recently have you established new lines? 
Okay, so that should make up, if you're out there listening, that should make up 100%. <laughs> Carry the one. So now that we know what goes into uh, your credit score, um, and we, we know a little bit about scores and, and averages and things like that, let's talk about fiction, because there's a lot of fiction going on out there around credit. So can, is there anything off the top of your head that you can think of? There's, you know, people talk a lot about checking your credit scores or your income, job history, closing lines of credit, all that kind of stuff. What kind of fiction do you know of Jason? Yeah. So I'm going to say that the obsession, especially now with like credit card companies displaying Mm -hmm. scores Mm -hmm. on every single monthly bill that you get. I'm going to say that checking your score is pretty insignificant in the grand scheme of things. That's a, that's a, a bit of fiction for me. There's a difference between you checking your score and a, a bank or Correct. a creditor checking your right. score. There's right. the soft hit versus the, the hard hit, right? right. Well, it, but looking at your credit bureau and what's reported to me makes sense. I mean, I'm thinking there, there could be, you know, an ID theft yeah. situation. Checking or, your credit is a good thing. Right. You got a free <laughs> t-shirt in college and you still have that Capital One card. Oh, yeah. sorry. I mentioned the name. <laughs> ooh, uh, ooh, strike I mean, that from yeah, the record. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> you know, what's in my wallet? Money. <laughs> Money's in my wallet. My son. Every time he sees one of those commercial, he says, dad, dad, that company's evil. And I said, whoa, what do you, I mean, maybe they are, but <laughs> I said, why do you say that? They want to know what's in my wallet. That's not their business. I was <laughs> like, you know what? Money. If you keep thinking that that's evil, you're, you'll be okay. That's great. Exactly. Stay away from Ooh, that company. Future financial planner <laughs> he might waiting be. to happen. He really likes money. So, I mean, I think that that is, I think that's a common misnomer. Looking at your, your bureau, your report, which you can get for free. I mean, yeah. you don't have to pay anything for and that. And by the way, speaking of uh, fiction or misnomers, misunderstandings, annualcreditreport.com is still the place I recommend to go. It's, it's free. It is. Actually free. <laughs> it's free. Red flag when you have to put your credit card number in to get a credit score, right? right. It's a um, government-run site. I mean, it, it doesn't... You go there and, and you, you'll understand. I mean, it looks you're like... You're not going to necessarily get a score, okay? You're, you're not going to get, get a report. score. Right. But you'll be able to see if you have any old... Especially revolving lines, that'd be like a credit card mm-hmm. or something like that. Again, you got a free t-shirt in college and or you were at, you know, Victoria's Secret and you <laughs> had to have the credit card to get 2% off. Is that what happened to you in college? Yeah, okay. absolutely not. So <laughs> um, I cannot stand that. But yeah, I think that's a common one. Well, let's talk about some other ones because I think that is the big one. Income. I hear a lot of folks say, well, I'm making more money. That helps my credit score. Jason, does it have anything to do with your credit score? They don't care. No. <laughs> like you could have, you know, a million dollars a year of income and a zero credit score and not be able to get your cell phone approved. You know, yeah, you like, know it I, happens. I, I think people think of this as like a debt to income. Now that, that's so if, different. When you're, right. That can, I've, I've seen, we worked in, in banks. I worked on right. the bank side of things and I saw people with fantastic credit scores who were denied loans because their debt to income was too high. But that doesn't affect your score. So income is insignificant. Yeah, uh, so the bank is going to look at your ability to pay back. That's really what that's all about. Now, you might get declined for that loan, and that could affect your score if you don't have enough income. But no, the income does not. And by the way, the IRS doesn't report to the credit bureaus what your income is. So what about job history, Jason? This is another one I hear about. No, I mean, it's another one. They don't care. They don't care. So when you, I mean, (laughs) just think about this. You've all been, we've all been in line at, you know, Lowe's or whatever, and someone's getting a credit card in front of you. They don't ask no. where they work. They don't even ask if they have a job. It feels like 2008. Yeah, but that's just <laughs> how it is. They they rely on the on the FICO right. And the bureau. They're looking at your history of your paying history. back, mm-hmm. so they're, they're going to trust that. They really don't care if you actually have a job or you have the income that you that you say because you've got the history of paying it back or not. But yeah, job history. You would think. Well, if I've stayed at my job for 15 years... I'm a stable guy. Yeah, I'm a stable guy. Well, they don't care about that. They care (laughs) about how much interest you pay them and how on time you pay them, how reliable you are. Totally nuts. Another one is closing unused lines of credit. I think a lot of people think if you're not using that card, close it. That will help your credit score. While I may be a proponent of closing out lines of credit that you're not using, it may not necessarily help your credit score. You know how I know? My oldest line of credit was a Guitar Center credit card, Jason. <laughs> I Those were the days. Remember, I don't know if I ever used it, actually. But but you got 10% off. Uh, whatever it was. <laughs> I, uh, you know, something like that actually probably hurt a little bit whenever I closed because that was my oldest established line of credit. Yeah, and I'm going to tell most folks, though, that unless you have an immediate need to refinance your house mm-hmm. or you're buying something where you are going to finance it, and we're going to talk about that, too, but close it. Okay. And the reason for this is not your credit score. 
it just opens up a door to to a thief. Yeah. Okay. I mean, which is more important than your credit score? Absolutely, <laughs> because that has real lasting impact. I mean, you want a new full time job, you know, get your ID stole ID um, stolen, and it's it's mm-hmm. bad. I mean, Experian, one of the largest yeah. credit bureaus, had a massive data breach. I was included in it. Mm-hmm. How come someone randomly bought fifteen hundred dollars worth of Walmart gift cards? Yeah, and you're like, well, you know, probably came from something like that. Yep. So uh, it's best, I think, to just close it if you don't have an immediate need to refinance or use your credit. I agree, and you know, just because times are good now doesn't mean times will be great. And I, I, I know a lot of people keep these lines of credit open as a just, of, just in case. But I also think that that could be there for a weak moment where you put yourself in a, a bad financial position because it's available. If it's available to you, it's available to identity thieves and all that. I, Absolutely, I, just, I say close them out, but it can it can affect your credit. It's going to lower negative. It. Yep. Uh, so you know, we hear having no debt helps. Actually, that hurts a lot of times. It's the opposite. If you're not paying on those trade lines. Now, having no debt is a good thing. We are absolutely for it. We're not again it. That's right. For it. Sorry. (laughs) Um, So having no debt really doesn't help. Remember what this score is about. It's about how willing you are to pay reliably interest to a creditor. So you got to use the debt. That's what it comes down to. If you don't have a balance, you can't pay the debt off. Now, we'll talk about ways to build your credit and using some of that debt actually helps if you can use it the right way. But the last one I want to touch on here before moving on to ways to build or improve uh, improve credit would be debt consolidation. Because I think a lot of a lot of people buy into, well, I've got all these collections. I've got this, that, and the other. I can't make all these credit card payments. Debt consolidation will help my credit score. Not even a little mm, bit. No. Yeah. I mean, you got to focus on the <laughs> second word there, the con part. I mean, wow. it's it's... Basically, you, if you want to consolidate a credit card, you can you can use the same techniques they use, which is they stop paying them. Yeah. Okay. It will likely You're usually settling. You're usually, usually settling, settling and, and paying that will less than destroy. You owe. Yeah. Your credit. And on top of that, you're probably paying these companies to help you decide which ones to not pay. Yeah, it's, but my payment's that, so much less. Yeah. I can debt consolidation. From what I've seen. I've not seen a good way of doing it. All I've seen is ways that it will damage your credit and sometimes lead to bankruptcy. So exactly. No, so not a good thing. Debt consolidation. The the Run. only way to do, yeah pay off your debt. That's that's the way you got. Yeah, nothing. So. Not, the company formed around helping you know people that are twenty two percent interest. Like ah, oh, it's just it's messed up. Is what it is. Okay, so let's talk about good things. Let's talk about ways that you should build your credit or improve your credit. Let's say you're starting out and you want to build credit. Uh, What are some good ways that we can we can start down that road responsibly? Mm -hmm. Jason, I know you and I have talked about this before. Working in a bank, one of the things that I saw that I really really liked, I still like, is a secured credit card or a secured loan. How familiar are you with secured credit cards? Yeah, I mean, I point blank asked you before we were getting ready for this episode. I'm like, I'm not sure what to even tell my teenager yeah what to do so i had quite frankly forgotten about this i think this is a pretty good idea i I think it's a great option for starting out and also for improving credit if you've got damaged credit. so i mean that basically is securing a pile of cash yeah having a line of uh, line of credit on a credit card that goes up to the secured line yep so 500 bucks is set aside it's secured to the credit card yeah like open a savings account put 500 dollars in it yep the bank will secure it They'll issue you, based on income, not yep. necessarily credit score, based on income, they'll issue you a line of credit. Right. $500 in that example, right? And they know that if you default on that credit card, guess what they have secured? They're not going to lose money. They have your Absolutely. $500. Yep. But this is a good way to establish a trade line and get positive credit reporting. And there are some smaller banks out there that still do secured loans where you can bring $1,000 in. Uh, they'll charge you a little bit of an interest rate, but they'll give you a one-year installment loan so you can establish credit. Uh, Again, they're not out anything because that money is secured. Right. So this is nice because it goes right along with it. Utilizing a certain percentage, and we talked about that in the the way that your score is calculated. Mm -hmm. Utilizing a certain percentage of your available lines of credit can actually go a long way in building a credit score. So this is what I used to recommend to folks. It's not about the dollar amount. It's not about how much money. So we we would do these secured credit cards for $300, right? right? If you utilize about 30% of your available line of credit... That's the sweet spot, 30% or under. So, you know, we'd tell people, hey, if you buy your gas, yeah, buy your gas because you're going to anyway, pay it off every month so you don't pay interest, but utilize about a third or less. And, you know, I I saw folks who were 
very close to, you know, getting a home loan and they couldn't do something like this in six months time, they were able to get finance for the loan that they needed. So right, right. again, we're not, we, we are not trying to tell you to improve your score so you can be a, a good borrower down the road. We want you to get as far away from borrowing as possible. But when you're starting out, eventually you're going to buy a house or you're going to buy a car. It is good to have credit. These are some ways to do it. A- another good one is, and, and this one, I had to kind of go back to my bank experience and think about this. You could become an authorized user on somebody else's credit card if they're willing to help you out. Right. So ultimately, Jason, let's say I didn't have credit and I said, I want you to help me build credit. Can I be an authorized user on, on your card? You say, yeah, sure. <laughs> if, I would. If, <laughs> if I make charges on that card and don't pay, it's really no problem on my end. You're ultimately responsible, but I, I can get the positive momentum on there on my side. So right. becoming an authorized user on a card with a parent or something like that when you're starting out. Could yeah. Be and you can, thing. nowadays you can limit the amount of, of credit available. It could be a hundred dollars, you know? Yeah. And so you know, it, it, it's easier to control that thing. So you don't have, you know, massive liability. Yeah. Not a big credit card fan, but they can do wonders for building credit. I say when you get to the point where you have credit established, you get rid of the credit cards. And if you don't ever have to go back, don't ever go back. Right. The biggest thing though, Jason, we hit on it at the beginning is pay your bills on time. Oh gosh. Don't stretch yourself. Don't overexert yourself when it comes to debt. Having about two lines, trade lines are, are, are it's plenty. You know, what, that, that's what you really need. One credit card is probably not going to do it, but have a have a couple of reporting monthly trade lines that that's going to get you where you need to and go. Actually, that's a better, that's a more efficient way of improving your score. Anyway, mm-hmm. I mean, if you're if you're looking at the wallet in the department store or on Amazon that has a spot for forty eight cards, <laughs> back away from the <laughs> yeah. vehicle, man. New wallet, new wallet. Yeah, this is not good. <laughs> So let's, let's wrap this up a little bit. And and by the way, if you do all these things and you're not paying your other bills on time, your utilities, your medical bills, things like that, those don't positively impact your credit score, but they sure can hurt your credit score. But right. So absolutely paying your bills and your other debts on time only helps. I mean, these secured cards and these other options, they only help if you're paying everything else on time. Right. Right. Absolutely. Um, So there's no picking and choosing. You got to do it all. Let's wrap up. I, I would put it this way, Jason. My, my takeaway of this episode is, hey, don't live and die with your credit score, okay? From a score standpoint, 700 to 750 gets you where you need to go. Don't obsess over getting up to that 800 or 850. The other thing is check annually, annualcreditreport.com. Just take a peek. The biggest thing I, I, I see is a lot of folks who do the right things that, that end up with a, a bad credit report or bad score is the theft situation that we talked about before. Absolutely, yep. And again, if you're starting out about six months with two active trade lines on average, from what I looked, that's you're on the road to 700 in about six to 12 months. That's so, crazy. Yeah. Once you have good credit, don't go back. But again, don't live and die with it. I, I do stand by Dave Ramsey when I say it's really your willingness to get in bed with lenders that they're scoring. So don't live and die with that. Yeah. Score. We want you to establish your credit to buy things like a house. I mean, that's what's important. So yeah. Yeah. That's what's good. Stinks. Nice. Strive for zero. well thanks for having a drink with us this week folks it's time to close out the tab if you have a question or a topic you want addressed on the old-fashioned finance podcast be sure to email us at podcast at bluejfg.com we'd love to hear from you don't forget to share the show with someone you love or someone who needs a little money muddling themselves you can stay up to date with the latest action by following us on facebook old-fashioned finance is brought to you by blue jay financial group that's bluejfg.com and produced by potestary studios we've been your hosts caleb and jason Cheers. Yeah. And remember, vodka sucks. (laughs) Big time. Blue Jay Financial Group, LLC. Blue Jay is a registered investment advisor registered with the state of Ohio. Registration does not imply a certain level of skill or training. The presence of this advertisement on this podcast shall not be directly or indirectly interpreted as a solicitation of investment advisory services to persons of another jurisdiction unless otherwise permitted by statute. Follow up or individualized responses to a consumer in a particular state by Blue Jay and the rendering of personalized investment advice for compensation shall not be made without first complying with jurisdiction requirements or pursuant an applicable state exemption. All verbal and written consent on this presentation is for information purposes only. Opinions expressed herein are solely those of Blue Jay unless other otherwise specifically cited. Material presented is believed to be from reliable sources and no representations are made by our firm as to other parties' informational accuracy or completeness. All information or ideas provided should be discussed in detail with an advisor, accountant, or legal counsel prior to implementation.